I am now convinced that Swan Lake is a euphemism for burning in hell. I see it now. Still pretty fucking awesome. Here are my immediate thoughts on Abigail. Abigail is the newest Splatterfest brought to us by Matt Maddalini Open and Tara Gillette, who gave us such great modern horror classes such as Ready or Not and the last two Scream movies. A group of would-be criminals kidnaps the 12-year-old daughter of a powerful underworld figure. Holding her for ransom in an isolated mansion, their plan starts to unravel when they discover their young captive is actually a bloodthirsty vampire. Look. Let's not front. This movie is fucking awesome. So after I left the theater, I had some feelings on some things. And after I felt like I had for my own opinions about the movie, I checked out a couple of reviews out of some places that I do respect. And it seems like we're all falling under the same conclusion. And that's how much more mind blowing would this movie have been if the audience didn't know that Abigail was a vampire? It's the From Dust Till Dawn effect. When me and my friends went to see that film in the 90s, we all walked out of there saying, man, how much more awesome would it have been if we didn't know that when George Clooney and Quentin Tarantino arrived at the Titty Twister, that place was a beacon for vampires. But that little nitpick, honestly, is not the fault of the filmmakers, but that's more marketing who felt that they needed to add the whole twist of Abigail being a vampire as a hook to bring audiences in. But honestly, the film itself plays out as if the audience is discovering everything the same time as the characters. So the construction of the film was meant to shock and surprise the audience. And that is pulled off almost flawlessly. But let's get to the strongest part of the film and that is the performances of the cast. We have a true horror ensemble that feels like one of those old 1970s Hammer haunted house films. And those performances really carry and propel the film forward. And what is great about this ensemble is it feels like every 10 minutes there are new layers being peeled back and we're learning something new about these characters all the time. And we as the audience are properly manipulated to change our allegiances with each one of these characters depending on the situation they're in. This script written by Guy Shields of Scream and Gary Busick is whip smart. Melissa Barrera from the last two Scream movies as Joey is great as the one who is tasked to take care of Abigail when she is kidnapped. Just like with everyone else in this cast, she has her own personal motivations and layers that is the reason for why she is involved in this particular caper. And she is written as a really complex and smart character who goes through hell, I think literally. But she is also the heart of the film and a great protagonist to root for. Dan Stevens, who seems like he has been everywhere this year, is set up as sort of the leader of this group and he is a righteous asshole. While pretty much everyone in this crew is morally askew, it is Frank that is the first one that is ready to pack his shit and bounce once he finds out who Abigail is and it is a great performance. <laughs> Catherine Newman is Sammy, the hacker of the group and she is played as someone who is kind of doing this more for the adrenaline rush but there are other layers to her character and she is just way in over her head and I really feel sorry for this poor girl for what she goes through in this film. Will Caitlin pretty much plays a mercenary in this film and he strikes a bond with a specific character in this film and I honestly thought that that was going in a specific direction but the film actually threw us a nice little curveball with his character. Poor Kevin Durand is the big dumb muscle from Canada. But he is really a teddy bear in this film. And again, he's another one of those characters that just has a lot of complexity and layers to who he is. And his backstory is actually sort of sad. And you sort of see 
where he's coming from when he makes some of the decisions he makes. And there is one confrontation that he has with another character that you really do root for him to just kind of wreck shit. The late Angus Cloud plays Rickles, the most unprofessional of the group. He's the driver and he's really hilarious. He brings a lot of the comedic levity to the film. The poor kid is from the hood and he's really street and he tries too hard to be street. And you can see where things are going for him and where his character is going to end up. And you still have to just shake your head and say, oh my God, poor kid. But yeah, Angus Cloud died tragically. And this is just another great performance, I think, to add really to his legacy. John Carlo Esposito is sort of the host of this caper. And when I did the trailer reaction, I sort of predicted that he was probably going to be nothing more than a glorified cameo. And that's really what it is. But he is still integral to the plot. And you can tell, just like with everyone else in this movie, he's having a hell of a time in this film. But to me, the star of the film is Alicia Ware as Abigail. And I think it is her performance that is going to launch a brand new horror franchise. Abigail is graceful, terrifying, and hilarious. And she even has her own secrets and layers. It is a great star-making performance that is absolutely out of this world. This movie looks amazing. I love me some claustrophobic horror. Alien is one of my favorite horror movies or just favorite movies of all time. And when it is revealed that everyone is trapped in here with Abigail, the movie does such a great job playing with space. And one of the great things with this movie taking place in this big old mansion is you can play with a lot of the, all these different rooms in this house and just set up a lot of great crazy set pieces. There is one scene where one room is just a stage and Abigail just does this crazed terrifying duet dance. It is hilarious, it is horrifying, but it is a great little set piece in this film. And yeah, this movie is really able to effectively mix in the comedy with the horror. And this movie is gory as hell. If you like extreme bloody goriness, this movie, just like Ready or Not or the Scream series, is going to give it to you. People get impaled, bodies explode like blood-filled grenades, and others just get munched on. This is a great, thrilling, creepy, entertaining movie, and the way it just escalates the tension just played with my anxiety. Another great aspect of this movie is how it plays with vampire lore. I just talked about Ganja and Hess and discussed how that wasn't a traditional vampire story with the lore and everything like that. And Abigail also follows in that tradition. And it is actually really great to see these characters play with what we know in terms of media with vampires and trying to figure out what works and what doesn't work. Also, it's fun trying to figure out what Abigail's power set is because if she can fly, what the fuck else can she do? Also, this movie has a heart that was completely unexpected, but it is through the relationship between Abigail and Joey and how it evolves and changes as the circumstances in the house changes. And that plays out so well. And they really stuck the landing on that. Overall, I think Universal has a great new horror franchise here. Abigail, like Megan, just hit at the right time and just grabs the pop culture zeitgeist with meme-ready moments, quotable lines, and Abigail as a villain is just badass. This has one of the best ensemble casts this year, and technically, this movie is top-notch with great gore, great cinematography, great writing, great directing, and all I wish is that I knew as little as possible going into this movie. If you like this film and want to spread the word, try to convince people to go into this movie blind. This movie was fucking awesome. It is the highest of blockbusters for me. Yes! 
we got some great horror. Let's go. And it seems like for me, we are now able to move away from the Scream franchise as all of those players are now involved with Abigail. So now it's going to be interesting to see how that all plays out. What did you think of Abigail? Share your thoughts, leave your comments, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to hit that bell icon so you can get notifications as well. Thanks a lot, everyone. Take care.